Hello, in this video, we'll talk about severe combined immunodeficiency, which is an inherited format of immunodeficiency where T cell and the B cell mediated immune response are absent or lacking. First of all, these disease resulting from absence of T cell or maybe lack of or impairment of T cell function. Also, B cell mediated antibody responses could be also defective. That means the cell mediated immune response and the humoral immune response both arm of the immune response is compromised now severe combined immune deficiency results from genetic defects that leads to virtual or absolute lack of t cells in the peripheries generally t cells are circulating in the periphery but in this disease t cells or the circulating t cells are literally absent why these t cells are absent because these defects which are at genetic level they target or they occur in very early stage of the t cell development or they affect the stem cells that feed the lymphoid lineage so these are the two defects that are uh, pronounced in severe combined immunodeficiencies now there could be defect in cytokine signaling and cytokine signaling is really important for T cell, B cell or any kind of immune cell development. So we know cytokine binds to cytokine receptor on the T cell precursor and ultimately give it the proper instruction to differentiate into a mature T cell. Now in absence or in case of mutation in these components which might be a mutation in receptor or intermediate signaling players or transcription factors these particular mutation in the, these components cellular components might lead to maturation defect of the t cells which ultimately reduce the number of circulating t cell premature death of the lymphoid lineage is also reported in case of scid most of the cases toxic metabolites of purine biosynthetic system accumulate which leads to destruction of these early uh, or immature t cells now defective VDJ recombination was found to be a cause of severe combined immunodeficiencies. In VDJ recombination which occurs in the TCR uh, gene and there is one particular enzyme which is the product of RAG1 or recombination associated gene. So this RAG1 and RAG2 um, recombinases are crucial for VDJ recombination. But many cases it has been seen that RAG1 or RAG2 genes are mutated. As a result, VDJ recombination does not happen and these T cells or the TCR receptor, they lack diversity. That is another cause of SCID. Now there could be disruption of the TCR or TCR mediated signaling. T cell receptor, once it interacts with the MHC molecules, it gives rise to several signaling cascades. And many components of these signaling cascades might be mutated in case of SCID. Now, SCID is not caused due to one particular reason. There could be plethora of reason whose end result is SCID. Now, depending upon underlying genetic factor, an individual with SCID might have total loss of T and B cell or it might have loss of only T cell but there is B cell present. Now even if B cell is present these B cells would not undergo somatic hypermutation or affinity maturation because all these processes require T cell mediated B cell activation independent or independent or t-cell independent b-cell activation does not lead to these processes so even if there is some amount of antibody mediated responses it would be ultra weak and mostly non-specific so in the first case we can see cell mediated immunity is totally compromised and humoral immunity would be partially compromised and in the next case where both the t-cell and b-cell are absent both cell mediated and humoral immunity would be compromised so T cell helps B cell to get activated and this activation is pretty strong and this signal ultimately tells the B cell to perform somatic hypermutation or undergo class switching to produce different isotypes of antibody. But this does not happen when there is 
T helper independent B cell activation. So that is why we understand in SCID there is some amount of antibody mediated responses but that is very weak and non-specific. So this T cell act, uh, T cell class switching or sorry T cell mediated B cell activation ultimately leads to class switching and this class switching requires an enzyme known as AID. Now it has been seen that AID is mutated or not functional in case of SCID patient. But how to understand that SCID is happening in the patient? So first of all, there could be very low number of circulating lymphocyte. Secondly, there would be failure to mount an immune response by T cells. In many cases, thymus would not even develop fully. Now, the infants with SCID experience severe recurrent infections that without early aggressive treatment, it could be proved to be fatal. That means normal child are kind of immune to several bacteria or viruses that might harm them. So body generally knows how to deal with it. But since the immune system is severely compromised in SCID, these pathogens which are not at all threat for a baby, it would be now proved to be harmful. Situation is so bad that the newborn infant with SCID can suffer from chronic diarrhea, recurrent respiratory infection and have problems in thriving in the life. So that is why they have to be kept in an isolated environment which is germ free. Now in case of SCID, the situation is so much compromised that even if you provide live attenuated vaccines, that might lead to infections in these babies. So it's pretty detrimental. There are several screening tests by which SCID can be detected. One way to understand is to see whether VDJ recombination is happening or not. If VDJ recombination happens, then mature TCR and BCR would be formed. So obviously, the lariat which would be excised during VDJ recombination should be detected if TCR and BCR maturation is proper. If they are not detected, that means TCR and BCR development is compromised and there could be defect. Now deficiency in the cytokine signaling is at the root of SCID. Several cytokine receptor or cytokine receptor mediated signaling is compromised. For example, if we talk about IL-2 receptor, IL-2 receptor gamma is actually mutated in SCID patients. So obviously IL-2 receptor mediated signaling is compromised. Now this IL-2 receptor gamma is actually encoded by X genes, X chromosome. So obviously it's a X-linked SCID and it is more prevalent in males. Next, let me tell you that these IL-2 receptors are actually co-receptor for several interleukin receptors such as IL-4, IL-7, IL-15, etc. So obviously IL-7 is really important for B cell development whereas IL-15 is important for NK cell development. So in absence of IL-7, in, in absence of IL-7 mediated signaling or IL-15 mediated signaling, NK cells or B cell development could be abrogated. So immune system would be compromised in various ways. Now AID deficiency is another important cause of SCID and we have already discussed that AID is important for somatic hypermutation and class switching which are all B cell maturation process. Ultimately this whole cause of SCID boils down to T cell and B cell maturation or developmental process and majority of the cases B cell and T cell development is abrogated or T cell or B cell levels are low, their circulating numbers are low, etc. So lastly, we need to talk about something, some important facts about SCID that in most instances, the genetic defect associated with SCID might lead to reticular dysgenesis. It might alter hematopoiesis and it can also affect the innate cells as well derived from the myeloid lineage. Now, MHC defects sometimes can resemble SCID-like phenotypes, but not necessary MHC defects would give rise to a SCID. Now the treatment options that is available for SCID right now 
is bone marrow transplantation but the success rate is not so high but it increases the chance of survival so i hope in this video we get a comprehensive overview about scid if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support me in patreon and you can access my code in access my courses in unacademy by using my code ap10 see you in next time in the next video thank you